Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to six player expansion to Viticulture, Tuscany Essential Edition, designed by Jamie Stegmeyer and Alan Stone, and published by Stonemeyer Games, who helped sponsor this video. Prior to this, there was an original Tuscany expansion, which is now out of print, but this Tuscany Essential Edition takes the three most popular elements of the original and offers them here. You can use these modules in any combination, but they must be paired with either the original or essential edition of Viticulture. We have videos for both of those, which I'll link to in the description below. Here, we'll assume we're using the Tuscany Essential Edition with the Viticulture Essential Edition. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, use this new board in place of the original. The side showing these orange spaces is for the included structure expansion, but we'll go over that later. So we'll use this side of the board for now, which doesn't have those spaces. On this board's wake up chart, now add the grapes token to this space. Each person also collects six of these influence stars in their player color. You'll otherwise set up the game following the usual rules as I've gone ahead and done already. And we'll assume we have four players in this video. With that understood, let's go over the new features of this board. First off, we now have all four seasons represented on the board. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. All the previous rules apply, meaning you can only place workers in the current season. And once you pass, you'll wait for everyone else to pass before placing workers in the following season. The action spaces and bonuses work the same way, even though their shaded opacity has changed. In other words, in a two-player game, only this first space can be assigned workers. These two leftmost spots are available in three to four-player games, and all of them can be used in five or six-player games. You'll also notice that some bonuses have changed position and aren't necessarily in the center space anymore. Some even have more than one bonus space within the same action. Probably one of the biggest changes is the new wake-up chart. At the beginning of the game, you'll collect each player's rooster, mix them up, and then randomly choose one as the start player. They'll pick one of the spring spots numbered from two to seven. None of these provide any immediate bonuses, and you can't pick the number one slot. After the first player has added their rooster to an empty space of the spring column on the wake-up chart, the other players in clockwise order add theirs to an empty space as well. It'll look something like this when you're done, and understand, your rooster will stay in its row for the entire year, as we'll see. In this wake-up order, players now take turns, either placing one of their workers on a green spring action space, or a private action space they control, like the yoke spot on their board. Or instead, you may pass. When you pass, let's say blue decides to, instead of placing a worker, slide your rooster to the right on the wake up track into the next season and collect any bonus shown there. Keep in mind, when you pass, you can't skip seasons. You must go into the next one, summer in this case. After passing, you won't take turns, but will wait until all the other players have also passed, moving their roosters to summer. Then the summer season starts, following the wake-up order again going from top to bottom, and players will now add their workers to the yellow summer spaces. When you pass in summer, just like in spring, you advance your rooster one space to the right and gain the benefit there, if any. Unlike regular viticulture, where all players gain a visitor card in the fall, here, you only gain a card if one is shown in the space your rooster moved into. But don't forget, if you built the cottage, you also draw a card for its effect, in addition to any you might also draw from the wake-up chart. I should point out, the gray symbol in this space means that you get to draw one card of any type, not just yellow or blue. When you pass into winter, again, take the bonus shown there, if any. We'll learn about this star bonus a little later, but this one here means that you immediately age all of your grapes following the normal rules. Even if you gain this bonus to age your grapes from the wake-up chart, you'll also still age all of your grapes again, along with everyone else, at the end of the year. If your rooster entered this space, collect the first player grapes token there. When you're done with the winter season and pass, after moving your rooster and collecting any benefit, immediately resolve the end of year upkeep steps as shown here. 
First, take back all of your workers, including the temporary one if you had control of it, returning it to the Wake Up board. Then, age all of your grapes and wine tokens by one, following the usual rules, and discard down to seven cards in hand. Then collect residual payments and choose your wake up position for the upcoming year. If you collected the starting player grapes during winter, then you must add your rooster to this first spring space. This is the only way a rooster can be assigned here, and then the grapes are returned to this space. With that, we've covered the general changes related to the four seasons and the wake up chart, so now let's learn the new actions we'll find on this board. These spaces allow you to place or move your star tokens, known as influence. To resolve this effect, take one influence from your supply and add it to any named region found on this map in the bottom left hand corner of the board. You ignore any victory point shown in the space, but immediately gain the listed benefit there. Two lira in this case. Each time you add a star, you gain the benefit shown in that region, and you can even add a star to a location where you or another player already has influence, and you still gain the listed benefit. Once you place influence on the board, you won't get it back. And as long as you have influence stars in your personal supply, then when you take the place or move influence action, you can only place new stars onto the map. In other words, as long as you have stars in your personal supply, you can only use the place part of the place or move action. Only once all your influence stars are on the map can you use the move portion of this action. From now on, when you resolve the place or move influence star action, you must move one of your stars from the region it's in to any other region. When you move a star, you do not gain the benefit of the space you went to. These bonuses are only gained when a star is placed in that region. Also be aware, when you use the place or move influence action, you can only place or move your own pieces, not someone else's. Anytime you see a star as a benefit, it means you may place or move one of your stars following the rules we just learned. So that means going here lets you place or move a star as a part of the action of this space, and then, because of the bonus, place or move a star again. At the end of the game, the player with the most influence in each region, compared against each other player with stars there, gains the victory points showing in that space. So here, blue has the most with three stars compared to two and one, and would earn two victory points. If players are tied for the most stars within a region, then no one gains the points there. As an optional variant, you can decide to use the map only for the benefits you gain when placing stars on it, but not for gaining victory points at the end of the game. And this is particularly recommended if you have a game with just two players. Here's another new action, trading one for one. When adding a worker here, you exchange any one of the four listed options for any of the four options. For example, I might spend three lira to gain a value one white or red grape. Or maybe spend one victory point to draw any two cards. You could even discard any two cards in order to draw any two other cards. Just be aware, if you choose to exchange a red or white grape, you can give up one of any value, but when you gain a grape using this, it must be a value one grape. This plus one bonus here means you may perform an additional trade after the one you gain for first placing your worker here. Since that last action involved grapes, I just want to point out there's no option to sell grapes on the Tuscany board, so you won't use these values unless a visitor card causes you to sell grapes. And those are the new actions you need to know when using this side of the Tuscany board. The game is otherwise played the same. It will end at the end of a year where a player has 25 or more victory points. The scoreboard goes to 40, but there's no limit on the number of points you can gain. If you end up earning more than 40, just track your actual total. Once all of the players have passed and finished their upkeep in the final year's winter phase, also add to their victory points any they've earned from the influence map. The player with the most points wins. In the case of a tie, just use the standard tie-breaking rules. And that covers the rules for this side of the new Tuscany board. So now, let's go over the included Special Workers module. If you're playing with Viticulture Essential Edition, introduce this module during the setup just before Mamas and Papas are selected. 
The cards with this back are the family cards, which you'll shuffle into a face-down deck, dealing two of them face-up onto the table, returning the other nine back to the box. Now, if you have a two-player game and happen to draw the innkeeper, discard it and draw a new card in its place. Now find these gray special worker tokens and set one on each card. Every player also collects two special worker tokens in their color to add to their untrained worker area. From now on, any time during the game where you would have the option to train a worker, you can pay the indicated cost as usual, but then have the option to pay one extra lira to train a special worker instead of a regular one. For example, if I was using the train a worker action here, I could spend four lira and train a regular worker. Or instead, I could spend a total of five lira and train a special worker. And this applies no matter what the cost is. For example, the effect here says that I may spend a victory point to train a worker. This could get me a regular one, but if I chose to spend a lira as well, I could train a special worker instead. After training a special worker, pick either of the two options on the face-up cards and collect the related worker in your color to add to those you'll have available next year. And just be aware, each player can never have more than one of each type of special worker. And each special worker has a unique optional ability as explained on its card. If a special worker's effect would trigger when it is placed, or when another worker is placed in its action area, the special ability of the worker resolves before anything else happens, unless the effect says otherwise. We're not gonna go through each of the effects in this video, as how they work is explained on the cards themselves and on this page of the rulebook if you have questions while playing. Special workers can also be placed on your personal board and really anywhere that regular workers could go, but their special effects usually only resolve when placed on certain areas of the main board. Just to be clear, you're never required to train special workers. You can always train a regular worker instead, but the maximum number of workers you can have, including your grande worker, is six. Once you have six, you can't train any more of any type. Also, don't forget that when you train a worker, unless an effect says otherwise, you can't use the newly trained one until the year after it was trained. And that covers the special workers module. Now let's look at the included structures module. To use this, we're gonna have to flip the board over to the side that shows these orange squares in the top right corner here. The cards with this back are the structures which you shuffle into a face down deck here. Then give each person a construction mat extension which they add to the left of their player board. During the game, anytime you'd resolve this symbol, draw the top card of the structure deck into your hand. Likewise, when resolving this symbol, which lets you draw from any deck, you can now choose to draw a structure card. To build the structure, put a worker on this build one structure action, which lets you build any one of your usual structures, or you may instead pay the cost of a structure card in your hand, which is shown here, two lira in this case, and then place it face up in either an open space here on your construction mat or an empty field you own. A field is empty if there are no vines or structures already on it. And keep in mind, you can't add a structure to a field that's currently sold. Do notice all structures earn you one victory point as soon as they're built, which you're reminded of here at their bottom. There are three different types of structures. Ones with a dashed space are action structures. These provide a private space you can assign one of your workers to during any season. Along with a benefit, most will have a cost or action to take, in this case, discarding one grape. You must pay the cost to gain the benefit. Just be aware, you can't use your grande worker's special ability to go to a structure space that's already occupied. Some structures are enhancements, and these provide you with the ongoing benefit printed at their bottom. Finally, there are residual structures. These give you a residual bonus at the end of each year, in addition to your normal residuals, but they might provide other benefits, not just Lyra. If you later decide you don't want a structure you previously built, you can assign a worker to this space to destroy it. Just pick any one that you have in play and send it to the discard pile. If it had a worker on it, set it aside, remembering to recollect it at the end of your winter phase. And also note, you don't lose any victory points your structure might have provided you with when it's destroyed. 
Also remember, the three modules in this Tuscany expansion can be used in any combination or just on their own. So if you decide to just use the structures module without using this Tuscany board, then for example, if you're using the original Viticulture Essentials board, you won't have a space for the deck of cards or any action spaces that would let you draw structures. In that case, during setup, after selecting Mamas and Papas, deal every player four structure cards and then return the rest to the box. Each player then looks at the cards they were dealt, picks one to keep, and passes the rest onto the player to their left. From the three that you receive from the player on your right, you'll pick one to keep passing the rest, and you'll keep doing this until eventually you're past just a single structure, which you'll keep. You'll now have four structures in hand. Trust me, it'll work out. And no others will be drawn for the rest of the game. The game also includes rules for using Tuscany in solo play, but those I'll leave for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play the Tuscany Essential Edition expansion for Viticulture. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.